SAP Finance Accounts Payable. In this video, we will look at the basic concepts and the process flows within Accounts Payable. Accounts Payable transactions are basically divided in two parts. We have the input transactions which flow in from purchases on the MM side and from the finance side and these are used for processing invoices. On the other hand, there are outputs which are converted into reporting. For example, once the invoice is posted, we process the payments and once that is done, we have different kind of reports which we can generate. For example, we can generate a report for seeing all the outgoing payments or we can generate a report to see all the open and the cleared items for one or more vendors. We can also generate payment lists, proposal lists and account lists which give us an idea of how many payments are still pending or how many payments are already completed and to which particular bank has the payment been made to. So accounts payable basically has a verification of the vendor transaction and the invoicing is done in two different ways. Invoicing can be done using a purchase order on the MM side or invoicing can be done without using a purchase order directly in finance. In both the cases, a finance invoice document is always created. But in the first case, the finance document is created via MM, whereas in the second case, the finance document is directly manually created. Let's look at this in more detail. There are two types of invoices, as we just saw. There are PO-based invoices. So purchase orders are first created and the goods are received based on this purchase order. And these are two documents, PO and GR, are first posted in the MM module. And once the invoice has been received for that, this invoice is referenced to the PO number and then saved in the SAP system. And of course, then this invoice flows into finance automatically. There are also non-PO based invoices where invoices are processed and paid only on the basis of the vendor account directly. This can mean something like those expenses which do not have a purchase order, like rent or any bills, etc. These are directly posted to the GL accounts of the particular expenses. After you post an invoice, there can be a situation where you want to either reverse a partial or the total invoice because of any reason. For example, let's say you purchase goods from a vendor worth $100 and you have received an invoice for $100 which you have posted in SAP. There can be a situation where you have now realized that goods worth $25 are not in good condition or they are broken and you want to return it back. You can do this and while doing this, you have to create a credit memo in the system. This credit memo acts like a reversal of $25 in the system. Hence, you have to pay the vendor only 100 minus 25 which means $75. A credit memo is nothing but an exactly like an invoice but a reverse one. You have the exact same fields to be populated in a similar way to an invoice. As it says here, a credit memo may be issued if under certain circumstances the vendor could not provide those services or materials according to the contract. Or a credit memo can be issued to adjust the posted invoices for reasons such as late delivery or unmatched goods specification. And finally, the credit memo 
will reduce the amount which you need to pay to the vendor. After you have received the goods and you have received the invoice and you have booked the invoice in the system, you need to finally make the payment to the vendor. An organization has accounts payable analysts who will post the invoices to the system and they will create a payment proposal for these invoices. A payment proposal is not a final payment but instead this gives you an idea of what are the payments which should be made either today or during this week or during the month. These payment proposals can be printed directly from SAP and they can be checked and reviewed further by the accounting head of the company. And finally, the accounting manager will do the posting of these payments once they have been reviewed in the proposal. And this creates a debit balance for the vendor and automatically clears the vendor open item. This is a summarized version of the invoice verification process. It's more or less the same that what we have discussed right now. It says that once you receive the invoice, you will review this invoice and verify it. And then you will create and park this vendor invoice in the system. If there are any changes to be made, then there will be another person like an accountant who will edit this parked invoice. Once they approve it or they are approved by the supervisor, this invoice is posted in the system. And once the posting is done and if it is within the tolerance limits, then the invoice is blocked only if there is no tolerance limit for that particular invoice. If their tolerance limit is agreeable, then it directly goes for posting the outgoing payments. Blocked invoices have a different process of releasing and cancelling and it needs a supervisor to do all the approvals for that. There are chances that if an invoice is blocked because of tolerance limit issues, it can also be cancelled completely. And this means that a totally new invoice needs to be agreed upon with the vendor and it needs to be recreated in the system. The next slide covers the credit memo process, wherein again if you have received an invoice, you check whether the invoice needs any correction or reversals. If yes, then you will have to park and create a credit memo. If this credit memo is approved by the supervisor, it is posted in the system and if you have any physical goods which you need to return, you can do that. And once this is done, the credit memo process ends. The last process which we will discuss is the outgoing payment process. The payment process starts with the administrator or the analyst in the company creating a proposal of payments. Once this payment proposal is created, this is reviewed by the supervisor or the accounting manager in the company. They check whether all the invoices are properly available in this particular proposal list. Once this is done, they approve it or reject it. If they reject it, then these need to be sent back to the AP analyst and they will review as to what was wrong with the invoice. It may be possible that the invoice was not due yet for payment. On the other hand, if it is approved, then the payment program is run. This is an automatic payment program which automatically posts the vendor account by debiting it and the bank or the cash account is credited. In some cases, it will also allow you to print out the checks automatically if this is designed properly. So the automatic payment program does not only create accounting entries, but it also automatically sends 
an information to the printer to print the checks and to print payment invoices for the vendor. Now let us look into some of the transactions or the business processes in SAP for accounts payable. First of all, we have the accounts payable invoicing. The invoice from a vendor can come from the internal logistics or the finance department in the organization. For every invoice or credit memo which is posted in the system, it will be assigned internally an automatic invoice number. This is dependent on the number range which is set up in the system for invoices. The invoice number will be put under the header text field and the tax invoice number will be put under the assignment field. These rules can be changed as per what the organization expects to see on the invoice. And the physical invoices will be put under the posting date field where it gives you an idea of what the physical invoice date was. This is done either automatically or manually by someone in putting these dates in the system. If there is any additional information or description which is given on the invoice, and if there is no other relevant space or field in SAP to enter that, you can use the text field, which gives you a free space to write any additional information which you need. The logistics invoice verification screen basically has these different parts. You have the basic data where you enter your document date, posting date, you enter the actual vendor invoice number in the reference field. You enter the currency. It may be a local currency or a foreign currency. You enter the amount. You enter the tax amount or the tax code. And you enter the purchase order number. Once you do these and you click enter, the details from the purchase order are automatically fetched within the invoice. You do not need to manually enter the quantity or the material type in the system. The material, the quantity, etc. details are all captured from the purchase order automatically. Then there is a payment tab which will have the baseline date which is usually the posting date of the invoice. It will also have the payment term which is captured directly from the vendor master you must have seen in the previous videos that the vendor master has a field for payment term in the master data. That field is captured over here in the invoice directly. Also from there the payment method is captured. The payment block if it exists, the partner bank and the house bank if it exists. There's another tab called the details tab which will give you details like the exchange rate or the header text or the document type. The document type can be either an invoice or it can be a credit memo. And this is how it looks like in SAP. As we saw on the previous slide, there are different tabs called basic data, payment and details. And we also have the tax tab which will cover all the tax related information. You will have to enter the vendor number, the amount, the invoice date, and a reference number that is the vendor invoice number over here. You can choose the currency and you can enter anything in this text field which you want to in a free text format. You can also choose the tax code from this drop down. And on the bottom of the screen, the GL account or, and the amount are entered manually because this is a finance invoice. This invoice is not from a PO, but this is a standalone finance invoice. Hence, the GL account and the amount needs to be entered manually. This, on the other hand, is an invoice which is posted from a PO. 
the details on the top are almost the same but on the bottom over here you see in the center you have the opportunity to enter the purchase order number once you enter the purchase order number and you click enter the details like the amount etc are automatically captured on the next line you do not need to enter this manually again if there are any changes that you foresee in the invoice you can change the amount manually in the header as well as on the line item this is the only main difference between an invoice posted directly from finance versus an invoice posted from PO. All document entries entered are permanently stored. However, SAP allows to reverse the posted entries. This means a reverse entry creates a new document with opposite postings and no information is deleted. There is always data which is collected in SAP and saved in the different tables. This is not deleted at all from SAP and will remain there permanently. It is not possible to reverse the documents that are already reversed, although it is possible to reverse in the same period or also in a different future period. In case of cleared items, you can reset the cleared items before the reversal. We will cover the vendor down payment process now. The down payment process works when there is a request for a down payment which we receive. Once we receive this, we make the down payment in SAP. Once the invoice is received from the vendor, we offset this down payment against the invoice. And then finally, we pay the balancing amount on the invoice apart from the down payment which we had already done. This means we can have a request of a down payment of $100 for example, but the invoice which we received from the vendor was for $150. We then go ahead and we offset this down payment against the invoice and hence a balance of $50 which is pending is finally paid to the vendor to clear the account. A down payment process is triggered by a statement or an explanation in any document that certain amount of the invoice has been approved to be paid in advance. As we also saw earlier, a down payment is to be done via a special GL indicator in finance. After posting the invoice, the invoice processor will clear the down payment against the invoice. And this is how a down payment screen looks like, where you have the normal date and the type of document and the currency, and very important that you have the special GL indicator. You can have the vendor account number over here, and you can have the bank details this completes our presentation on how the vendor down payments are done. We will now end this video here and we will cover the next processes and transactions in accounts payable in the next video. Thank you very much for watching Edupedia World Videos.